I'm going to show you how to make a leather holster for your DL44 style blaster uh, using the patterns that I have available on my website. And I'll show you all the tips and techniques to put this together in a nice professional looking way. I've printed out the plans on some cardstock just to give it some stability. And I'm just going to look through and make sure I've printed to 100% size, check, make sure that's two inches, those straps are three quarter inch, and the larger strap is two inches wide. If I think I'm going to be using my patterns a lot, I like to laminate them just with some packing tape, and that usually keeps them holding up for as long as I need them. For the main body of the holster, I need to attach the two sides together, so I'll just cut it in half and then align them together, and I can just tape down the center, and that'll give me my entire pattern. I can just cut it out from there. Now I've got all my pattern pieces laminated and cut out, and we're ready to transfer to some leather. I'm using vegetable tanned leather here, which is really what you need to make a holster like this. And I've got some 7-8 ounce weight for the main body of the holster, and I'm going to use 8-9 ounce, which is a little heavier for the belt strap, which kind of needs some extra um, heft to it. I've got all my pieces roughly cut out. I cut out the straps with the strap cutter, uh, which gave me some nice precise uh, leather widths. You can always just cut these out with a sharp knife and ruler uh, if you need to, but the strap cutter uh, works very well. Now I just need to mark my patterns onto the leather so I know exactly where I'll need to cut, um, marking where all my rivets and snaps need to be, as well as the ends of uh, the straps there. And now I can mark some of my smaller pieces. I'll save the leg strap for later. I'm going to have to measure that out specifically, uh, but I can do some of my smaller pieces. The retention strap for the holster. I've got uh, a couple of loops that are going to go on the back of the holster as well. The toe plug is going to need to be two layers of leather thick to give the bottom of the holster some rigidity. So I'll start by just cutting one layer out and then gluing it to another layer of leather using some contact cement. So once that's applied and dry to the touch, I can attach them together and then set it with a hammer and hopefully those will not come undone. And then I can just come back and cut out the bottom layer and I've got a nice double layer of leather uh, for the toe plug. And that's looking nice. Next, I'll trace out the main holster body onto the leather, and I'll do the outline and mark any of the snaps and rivets. For the leg strap, you'll need to measure out how long you want it to be, and that'll just be the circumference around your upper thigh, kind of where you think you'll wear it. And so once I've got that measurement, I can mark one end, measure down to the other end, and mark the uh, snaps there. And I'll come through and just knock off some ends on all these straps to make them look nice. Trim that one down to a point. I like to do just a very soft uh, bevel on the edges for something like this. So I'm using my smallest edge beveler just to knock off a little bit um, and make it comfortable and look a little worn in and used. And let's just toss out those crumbs and vacuum up the rest. Now it's time to dye the leather to a nice brown shade. I'm going to use Feebing's Dark Brown here, Dark Brown Pro Oil Dye. 
um, which is a good choice. You can also use um, some kind of acrylic dye, which might be better um, if you haven't done this before. But I'm just going to apply it with a foam uh, block and just make sure I get the leather saturated, but not too saturated. And uh, that'll give me a nice even dye uh, color throughout the whole thing. It's going to start off a little on the light side, especially with this dye, but it'll darken up as we uh, oil it and as it ages. While the leather is still a little wet from dyeing, I'm going to come through and mark my stitch lines. And I'll set the calipers at four millimeters, which I find is a nice uh, stitching distance for something like this. And I'll just come through and mark the edge there and across the bottom where I'm going to need to sew. And I'll also mark the border of the toe plug because that'll get some stitching there also. Dyeing is going to leave the leather kind of dried out and dehydrated, especially when using alcohol-based dye like Five Inks Pro. So you'll need to come and just rehydrate the leather with some oil. And I'm using kind of a mostly neat's foot oil uh, blend here. And I'm just going to make sure that each piece is thoroughly covered but not saturated with oil as you can't remove it once you've put it in. I'm going to use some saddle soap to just clean mm -hmm. up the surface of the leather and condition it a little bit. And I'll also use the saddle soap to burnish the edges of the leather and that will mat down some of the fibers there and just create a nice smooth uh, edge surface which is a nice touch. Now you don't need to do that, you can leave them uh, raw, uh, just beveled, but I find that it's a nice professional way to finish off a piece of leather, just to give them a slight burnish. Uh, and I'll go through with a cloth, a wet cloth saturated in uh, saddle soap, and just generate some friction on the edges and burnish them until they're nice and smooth, and even come back with my wood burnisher on some of those harder to get spots. I'm going to finish the surface of the leather uh, just to protect it a little bit and give it a soft luster. And here I'm using Feebing's Leather Balm, which is a wax-based finish. And I can just apply it evenly over the surface and even get the edges and once it's all soaked into the leather, I can just buff it with a soft cloth to a nice lustrous finish. And then I'll also just come and seal the edges with an acrylic finish, which isn't really necessary, but it'll just keep them from coming uh, undone, as it were. Once I've got everything finished, I can punch holes for the snaps and rivets. I'm going to use a 332nd uh, punch for the rivets, which fits, it fits a standard size rivet. And then I'll use an eighth inch punch for the snaps. And these are going to be line 24 snaps, which are kind of the big snaps. And an eighth inch punch works pretty well for those. And I'll also punch a drain hole on the toe plug. I like to mark all my stitching holes first using just a diamond prong uh, chisel. And I'm just going to mark them lightly here. I don't want to go through the leather and hit my, uh, my slab underneath. So I'm just going to mark these holes lightly along the bottom and along the side where I need the stitch. I need to attach the belt loop and retention strap before we can do anything else here. So I'm just going to mark out where that needs to be on the holster. 
and then so that the cement will stick, I need to rough up the surface a bit. I'm going to test fit the retention strap and just mark where it attaches to the main body. And I'm going to skive the end of the strap, um, which just means to make it thinner towards the end. And that's just going to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and it's going to make stitching a little easier, but it's not a completely necessary step to take. I'll just lay out all of my pieces that I will need to glue and stitch and I'll rough up any other areas where I need the glue to adhere, like on the front side of that, which is going to flip around and glue onto the main body of the holster. So here's how everything's supposed to be aligned, and that'll be a a little bit of foreshadowing, but uh, let's get this glued up and stitched. So I've got the contact cement on all of these pieces, and you can see here's where I'm doing something a little weird. Well, so I, I attach the retention strap, and then I'll attach the belt loop, which I've also uh, pre-marked with the diamond stitching chisel. And I'm going to punch through all layers of leather with this diamond stitching all once I have everything glued down there. And that's going to be much easier than trying to punch through everything with the stitching chisels. I've got the holster clamped up in my stitching pony and I'll just thread the needles here and get ready to stitch. I'm going to be using a saddle stitch, which is basically a two-needle sewing technique. I'm not going to explain exactly how to do the saddle stitch in this video, but it's not hard, especially on a prop like this where it doesn't need to be exact. So coming up here is where I realize that I've glued on the retention strap backwards and I'm going to need to redo uh, some of this stitching, um, but that's no problem. Just to undo and flip the strap around and glue it back in and do it again. And here I've got the strap in the right way so that the nice side faces out when closed. And now I can actually finish my saddle stitch, stitch around the perimeter that I've already punched the holes for, and just come and double stitch a few uh, loops at the end there just to lock everything in nice and tight. The saddle stitch is an extremely strong type of stitch because each end of the thread is actually doing its own loop through each side of the leather. And so it's not gonna get pulled apart or come undone like a machine stitch will, especially when using heavy duty thread like this. And the mark of a nice saddle stitch is you get some nice slanted stitch lines on both sides and we'll just melt the ends of the thread down so they're not sticking out and so that they won't come undone. Now it's time to set the snaps and hardware. And like I mentioned, these are line 24 um, snaps, nickel plated. Uh, so these are pretty heavy duty snaps and these are, these are nice snaps. And I've got a press and die set um, that I can use to set these. Now you probably won't have this, but when you buy uh, a set of um, of snaps, sometimes they come with a little anvil that you can use. It's not the easiest thing in the world to set the snaps with using the anvil, but you can do it in a pinch if you're not going to invest in a press. And I'll, of course, link where you can get some inexpensive snaps and sets if you need them. 
Next, it's time to set the rivets, and I'm using these nickel-plated double-cap rivets. They've got a 9.2 millimeter head and a, or cap rather, and a 9.5 millimeter post, which is enough to get through um, the thicknesses of leather that we're dealing with here. And first I'm going to set the uh, leg strap loop. So I've put the posts in, I can set the caps on, and they'll, they'll kind of lock on there. And then I'll use the press, but you can get an anvil for rivets as well. Just hit them with a hammer. You can even just hit them with a hammer, and they won't have a nice dome on the top. They'll be kind of flat, but at least you can seat them properly. And so I've got all of the straps riveted on, and we can see how this is going to go together with the belt loop there, which snaps in place and goes under the loop in the back. Making sure I've got all my snaps and rivets set, since I won't be able to get in there later, I can glue the edge of the holster together. So I'm using this contact cement again, and I've just secured the edge, maybe like five millimeters in, and then I can carefully press them together and they should stick until we are ready to sew. I'm just gonna press along the seam to make sure that the adhesive is all made contact. I can now go through and punch all the way through my stitch line with the diamond awl. And the diamond awl is shaped just like the stitching punches, so you get the same slanted shape. You just have to make sure you're aligning it in the correct direction. I'll show you most of the process of stitching up the side seam here. And we can start just by getting even lengths of thread on both sides. And I'm going to do a one loop over the top of the holster just so that it's nice and secure and isn't going to spread apart just at the end there. And both of those loops are going to go over that, so you get a double loop over the top there. To make a good saddle stitch, you need a couple of things. First, I've got the show side or the top side facing towards the right. I'm also always making sure to stitch towards me. So the show side is on the right, and then we're stitching back to front. As we watch this uh, double speed montage of uh, stitching up the holster, just note how each needle is going to go through. The needle that starts on the left hand side will go through the hole to the right and then end up on the bottom of the hole or the side closest to you. And the needle on the right hand side will go through to the left hand side and end up on the back of the hole or the top side of the hole on the left side. I'm going to stitch the toe plug using the same length of thread. So I've got plenty of extra uh, length in there. And once I get that glued in, I'm just going to make sure I've got it seated exactly how I want it. Just below the top of the uh, bottom edge of the leather. Now here we're gonna get some all work going. So those first holes, that's just gonna go straight through. But now these next ones, I need to angle it up so that it comes out of the leather right on my stitch line there. And I just need to get the very tip of the all coming out. I can just work my way around, making sure I'm getting each hole and that I've got kind of an equal distance for the exit holes. The technique for stitching up the toe plug is going to be pretty much the same as the saddle stitch, but we just have to make a few little changes to start with. So this first stitch, I'm just going to go through and from one side to the other and just make sure that's tight um, against the toe plug so I don't have a big uh, gap there at the end. Now from there, I can go the left side through the first hole up through the toe plug. And now here's where I can actually start the saddle stitches. 
I can stitch around from the right side around just as I would on a normal saddle stitch. Left side goes in, out the bottom of the hole. Right side comes in, out the top of the hole. And now I can just stitch around and make sure that after each stitch I pull the thread tight enough to get a firm grasp on the leather, but not too tight that it's going to tug on the toe plug because the leather at the edge of the toe plug is pretty thin, so you don't want to over tension the line there. Once I get about halfway done, I've just flipped it around uh, in the stitching pony there so that I'm always stitching towards me as opposed to away. And now that I've made it all the way around, I'm just going to back stitch a few stitches so that it's nice and tight. So there, I've got that doubled up. I've gone over to the left side, and then I'll back stitch up maybe two or three uh, stitches just to lock everything in and make sure it's never going to come undone. Once I'm satisfied with my back stitch, I can get both threads coming out the back side and then just snip them off and burn down the end of the thread. I've still got a raw edge of leather um, where we just stitched it shut. So I'm just going to come through with that saddle soap again and the wet cloth and just lightly burnish it down. Again, on a prop holster like this, it doesn't need to be perfect. If you've got the edge a little uneven, you know, just because of the way you glued it together, you can always sand it down to even it out. The last step in this build is just going to be to set the snap for the retention strap, which I waited to do until I can actually fit a blaster in there. Well, once I've got it seated all the way down, I can test the strap and make sure it's tight enough to hold the blaster in there, and then just mark where I want the snap to be. Once I've got that marked, I'll just punch the hole out set the snap, and that is the end of this build. These plans are specifically uh, set up to replicate Luke's uh, Empire Strikes Back holster, um, but it's pretty easy to modify if you want to turn it into a, uh, or attach it to a Han Solo rig. This holster size should fit pretty much any uh, one-to-one -one scale uh, DL-44 blaster that's, you know, based on a a full-size Mauser, and you can see I've got both uh, the Luke blaster and the uh, A New Hope uh, solo blaster, and they both fit in there pretty well. Thanks for watching this video, and if you want to get the plans to build this holster, you can find them at my website, which I've got linked below. I'll also link you to all the tools and supplies you'll need through Amazon. Either the ones I've used, or if those are cost prohibitive, uh, some more affordable options that are still, you know, good quality enough to get the job done. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.